CM Punk returned Friday night on AEW Rampage. Both Becky Lynch and Brock Lesnar returned Saturday night during WWE SummerSlam. Who, if anyone at all, will return tonight at WWE NXT TakeOver 36. Thank you for tuning in and listening to this TakeOver 36 recap due to technical difficulties during tonight's live stream. So, as I've done in the past, sit down, record a recap afterwards, upload it as an audio only right here on the YouTube channel. Be sure to hit that red subscribe button, little notification bell next to it as well. Like, follow, and subscribe on social media. Links in the description below. Thumbs up button. Share hashtag WWE, hashtag WWE NXT, hashtag NXT TakeOver. Chat questions and comments, super chat, super stickers. Always greatly appreciated tonight's NXT TakeOver 36. Very well could have been the last great NXT TakeOver with NXT as we know it, with the rumored upcoming revamp for WWE NXT on Tuesday nights on the USA Network. But before we look to the future, let's live in the present, this very moment, Sunday night, August 22nd, 2021, WWE NXT TakeOver 36 from the Capitol Wrestling Center, the WWE Performance Center in Orlando, Florida. We had a kickoff pre-show match that was recently added with Ridge Holland and Trey Baxter, along with the other five matches that were on the main card, four being championship matches, one for the Million Dollar Championship, one for the NXT Women's Championship, the two others then for the NXT United Kingdom and the WWE NXT Championship as well, along with a two out of the three falls matchup with Adam Cole, Bebe, and Kyle O'Reilly. We'll begin with the kickoff pre-show match with the returning Ridge Holland defeating Trey Baxter as this kickoff pre-show did not start until 7.30 instead of the normal 7 p.m. Eastern time for an 8 o'clock pay-per-view, so only a half-hour kickoff pre-show, which sometimes, for the most part, is a sigh of relief. I only have to deal with it for a half hour before the show does, in fact, begin. And then TakeOver was pretty short and sweet as well. It was only a, uh, about a two-and-a-half-hour show, so um, all of it done before 11 p.m. Eastern Time here. And um, as mentioned, we'll begin with the uh, kickoff pre-show match, Rich Holland defeating Trey Baxter before saying uh, in the ring, cutting promo, uh, standing over Baxter with Pete Dunne by his side, saying basically anyone that one step up to me is going to get the same end result as him as he pointed to TB on the mat uh, before he called out both Tomas Ciampa and Timothy Thatcher. So even before TakeOver began, uh, we added some strength to the NXT Tag Team Division in which this evening we did not get, uh, for the first time in quite a while, on NXT TakeOver, did not have a NXT Tag Team Championship matchup uh, with MSK and then, of course, whoever the opponents would have been. So, um, yeah, short and sweet two-and-a-half-hour show for TakeOver compared to the four-hour SummerSlam we had last night uh, in which, as mentioned, on Friday night, AEW Rampage, second-ever Rampage, short and sweet one-hour show on Friday nights, after SmackDown, of course, on Fox from 8 to 10, and then 10 to 11 for Rampage on TNT for AEW. But uh, in Sin City, Las Vegas, Nevada, WWE had SummerSlam last night, as mentioned, in the Raiders' new home of Allegiant Stadium. They said 50,000 plus. I don't think there was that many people there. Maybe between 40 and 50, but not 50 plus. Uh, just be sure to go check out the SummerSlam Live Watch Along or Action Stream right here on the channel as well should be the video right before this upload and thank you once more for tuning in and watching but um or listening to this should have been watching but as mentioned technical difficulties uh with uh, tonight's live stream so this is what we're doing uh for tonight and then the next upcoming live stream i'll get into that uh here at the end of this recording so uh stick around stay tuned and i'll have some details uh for that then, but um, yeah, two and a half hour takeover compared to the four hour show for SummerSlam we had with okay, a returning Becky Lynch and Brock Lesnar uh, to close out the show, uh, along with a few title changes as well. Um, but um, overall, I mean, it was a pretty damn good weekend for 
pro wrestling. Uh, I mean, okay, you had to go home for SmackDown Friday night, and then also Rampage in Chi Town with CM Punk kicking off the show, uh, and then also, of course, a few returns during SummerSlam, but then take over now tonight and uh, a few title changes uh, during this show as well which we'll get into here in a second but um, yeah I mean for the what three seven almost ten hours of wrestling uh, we had uh, over the past three nights I mean um, Rampage was an all right show I mean of course best part of the night was CM Punk returning and then it sort of fell flat after that I thought um I had the honor to attend uh, the first ever AEW Rampage uh, as well, I might add, as uh, attended Dynamite and Rampage with Dark and Dark Elevation tapings uh, for AEW YouTube, of course. And videos uh, from those events are right here on the channel. Be sure to go check those out, along with a WWE TV and a WWE house show. Uh, so be sure to go check out all 69 videos right here on the channel. Uh, but... Uh, you know, for the most part, SummerSlam uh, into Saturday then, pretty decent show. I mean, it was all right. It was pretty good. I mean, as mentioned last night during the live stream, consistency-wise from start to finish, could have been better in that regard. Uh, but then also a few of the matches at the start of the night uh, I thought felt rushed. And then they added in three segments, which, of course, uh, pushed it over the four-hour mark then past midnight. Um, so, you know, to close out the weekend, a two, two and a half hour takeover in which, okay, four or five matches for a takeover are the norm anyway. Sometimes it's a two, two and a half, three hour show, depending on how long they allow the matches to go. But, um, a sigh of relief for a one hour rampage, uh, of course, a W second show, but then also to close out the weekend on a high note. Even with the you know potential revamp, as mentioned for NXT moving forward, with as little guys as they'll have as well on the roster compared to the NXT as we've known in the past five, six, seven years, um, they'll be fine. But it's just going to get some time, going to take some time, I should say, to of course get used to it. Uh, but who knows? For the most part, it could stay. You know, mostly the same, and there's only going to be a few small changes. But uh, from what I've heard and what people are saying, um, it's going to be a total revamp. NXT is going to be something totally different that we've never seen before. But only time's going to tell. Of course, earliest we'll find that out is this Tuesday on NXT, as Raw, of course, is tomorrow night. NXT Tuesday. AW Wednesday impacts on Thursday if you did not know if you don't watch impact and then Smackdown of course still on Friday nights but um, NXT gonna continue the current breakout tournament they have going on it'll be the finals uh, with Carmelo Hayes and Odyssey Jones uh, they've said the winner is gonna receive a championship opportunity uh, I'm expecting just looking ahead um, it'll probably be for the NXT North American Championship because uh, currently, NXT-wise, um, with the Cruiserweight Championship pitcher being Kushida and Roderick Strong, that was, also wasn't on the show tonight. Uh, but then we'll get more into the other two, three championship uh, pitchers with the results of tonight's show here in a minute as well. But uh, yes, once more, thanks for tuning in and listening. Should be watching, as mentioned, but technical difficulties with the live stream. So as we've done in the past, sit down and record this afterwards and upload it then at that point so like follow and subscribe hopefully enjoyed NXT TakeOver 36 this evening hopefully enjoyed Smackdown's go home uh, with the main event segment being of course uh, Roman Reigns and John Cena Reigns saying he's either leaving Vegas as Universal Champion or leaving WWE of course he retained the Universal title before being uh, interrupted by Brock Lesnar to close out the show, but then also hopefully enjoyed AW Rampage with CM Punk, and then also SummerSlam this weekend as well. SummerSlam weekend as a whole, um, as of late, probably one of the best weekends overall uh, in pro wrestling that I can recall at least. Um, if you have another, you know, few dates, whether they were in a row considered as a weekend or a whole week or 
a few events in a row or a month or however you want to put it. If you have something better than that, let me know in the comments below. But uh, yes, once more, thank you for tuning in and listening. So yeah, on the kickoff pre-show, Rich Holland defeated Trey Baxter. It was a very, very quick match, under five minutes uh, before, as mentioned, uh, calling out Bo Chompa and Thatcher. Uh, so we'll see what happens with uh, Rich Holland and Pete Dunn. Uh, and then Chomp and Thatcher, potentially, if they go at it for a little while, maybe whoever wins that will become the new number one contenders for the NXT Tag Team titles. Beats me. Only time will tell. We'll see. But um, next, let me talk to you. We're going to go to the moon. Yeah, I said it. To the moon. Uh, the Million Dollar Championship was on the line. It kicked off the show. It was LA Knight defending his... Million Dollar Championship against Cameron Grimes as Ted DiBiase was ringside. He actually came out first, uh, brought a garbage can with him, and then out came Grimes. Grimes took off his uh, butler outfit that he's had to wear, being, of course, LA Knight's butler the past uh, month, month and a half or so, dating back to the Great American Bash, as this was the third and probably uh, final match between these two for quite some time, at least for this championship, LA Knight with the loss as Cameron Grimes was victorious. Probably going to be moving on, I would assume, uh, unless they're going to call him up to the main roster, which I don't see that happening right now, just because he just came to NXT back in February. He'll probably uh, jump up to the NXT North American Championship pitcher, or uh, even better, and probably the uh, best option for him right now, especially after losing, uh, and best option um, as a potential contender for the NXT Championship with uh, the new champion we have for that championship as well, as that was the main event of the evening, and we'll get to that in a second. So, if you, of course, know who was in that uh, NXT Championship match, you can uh, do the math, put it together, and um, yeah, so we'll get to that in a second. But um, Garbage Can, Grimes uh, threw the outfit away, and then Knight came out. Pretty banger of a match, honestly. Uh, I mean, like I said, they, they fought at uh, TakeOver In Your House back in June, July on NXT TV for a TV special of the Great American Bash then, and then also just now at TakeOver 36. Um but for the most part, this feud, in my opinion at least, was, uh, or has been, I should say, one of the most funniest uh, things that WWE, at least WWE NXT as of late, has done. Um, especially with the backbone of it being uh, all the video packages, all the uh, funny comedic segments they've done uh, out and about from, you know, going golfing, cutting grass, um, etc. I mean, there was how much shit that they did. I mean, as of late, I mean, you probably have to go back to last year whenever the Street Profits and Viking Raiders uh, were doing uh, their, whatever you want to call it, Olympic Games. Um, I mean, even right now up on the main roster with what uh, Miz and Morrison are doing, um, you know, the drip stick and then the drip stick 2000 uh, that they introduced at SummerSlam. So, um, okay, it's entertaining. WWE's, you know, sports entertainment compared to other pro wrestling companies. It's what it seems like anymore. Uh, but, um, yeah. Million Dollar Championship reintroduced as, you know, we've had uh, a few older pay-per-views in the meantime and potential uh, returns, you know, at some point in time returning coming up by the end of the year or even, you know, next year, especially with NXT. Um, but, uh, yeah, the Million Dollar Championship uh, has been LA Knights for a few months until now and he loses uh, to Cameron Grimes as... Uh, Eli Drake lost to Trevor Lee and Lee Grimes picks up the win here at TakeOver 36. The NXT Women's Championship was also on the line. Uh, Raquel Gonzalez and Dakota Kai, if only Tegan Knox was still in NXT, 
course, she's up on the main roster with Chauncey Blackheart as a mixed tag, which they make no sense together, but that's how different the main roster is, of course, to NXT. Because, I mean, you go back, it was always Dakota Kai and Tegan Knox as a tag team taking on Shotzi and Ember Moon. Um, and then Tegan returned at the bash. Um, seemed like she was going to be starting a feud with Candice LeRae. Of course, she's now pregnant. Um, and then Tegan's up on the main roster with Shotzi. So they try to make you forget, but, you know, all of us real fans know the real true story to it. But, um, yeah, if only uh, Tegan Knox was still in NXT, um, you know, she very well, if Dakota Kai would have won, which she didn't, or Kel Gonzalez retained, um, you know, she could have been the one that uh, came out to interfere, challenge her moving forward, return, debut, however you want to put it. Instead, with Raquel Gonzalez picking up the win, it was Kaylee Ray coming over from NXT UK, debuting in NXT. I believe she's been on NXT a few times uh, in the past. I mean, they were trying to cross over NXT and NXT UK with a few of these matches or a few of the segments that did, in fact, happen tonight, it felt like, uh, especially with the NXT United Kingdom UK title on the line with uh, Walter and Draginov, but... Yeah, Kaylee Ray, uh, a former NXT UK Women's Champion, uh, now uh, seems to be in NXT full-time now, moving forward, and she made her case uh, to be next in line for that WWE NXT Women's Championship. So um, it seems to me it'll be Raquel Gonzalez and Kaylee Ray uh, potentially at the next NXT TakeOver, in which we do not know when that'll be, especially with this potential revamp NXT is going to be getting. I mean, as of now, normally, the next one would be early October, uh, and then they'd have one around Thanksgiving, whether that's the weekend prior, of course, during Survivor Series weekend, or uh, right after, early December then at that point. Uh, but if they're not going to be having any more takeovers moving forward, which I don't know why they want it, um, I mean, if that's just going to be the new norm and... You know, NXT's basically dead as we know it. The funeral was tonight for TakeOver 36 then for the past five, six, seven years, as mentioned earlier. You know, they have two hours of TV each week on Tuesday nights on the USA Network. So, and as mentioned with the TV specials that they've had, I mean, just do everything, you know, right then and there then. But at the same time, you're going to have your five, six pay-per-views for TakeOvers per year, you would think. Uh, but... We'll see. As mentioned, earliest we'll find all this out um, will be uh, this Tuesday, and then I would assume a month from now, maybe two months from now, we'll know more. But yeah, Raquel Gonzalez defeated Dakota Kai. I was about ready to say Kaylee Ray. She'll probably defeat Kaylee Ray, though, first time they fight. Um, but then at the same time, probably not. I mean, they're not going to have Kaylee Ray debut and then end up losing her first match for a women's championship and at the same time there's what was mentioned as little as the roster is right now or about to be they still have talent they still have a lot of men and women that can go out and you know get the job done so um yeah Dakota Kai with the loss Raquel Gonzalez defeating her and then Kaylee Ray um debuting and as mentioned seems to be uh, challenging Raquel Gonzalez for this NXT Women's Championship moving forward. Also, at NXT TakeOver 36 here, we had the NXT UK title on the line with Walter and Ila Draginov. Um, Walter, the ring general himself, his 870-day reign as UK champ in WWE NXT has now, in fact, come to an end. Ilya Draginov defeated Walter, and he is your new NXT UK champion. With Walter now moving forward, as mentioned earlier, with LA Knight potentially being propelled to bigger and better things, uh, Walter, unless main roster is calling, he's going to be next in line, you would think, for that NXT championship, if he's going to be stateside. We know with Walter, he doesn't really want to live here in the United States, he wants to stay across the pond, and rightfully so. More power to him. 
Uh, I mean, contract-wise, yeah, he signed to the company, but ball's still in his court, and, you know, he's not technically free on what he wants to do, but, you know, he, he's got some leverage, uh, as Adam Cole does right now as well. Um, as mentioned with Adam Cole and Kyle O'Reilly, it was a two out of three falls count anywhere match, uh, in which the first was a traditional wrestling match, second a street fight, and then if it went to a third fall, it would be inside of a steel cage. Back to the NXT UK Championship match, uh, quick second here. Um, I heard a lot of people uh, here in this short amount of time following TakeOver um, already saying this is a match of the year candidate. It was a barn burner back and forth, a um, few uh, near pinfalls, uh, jogging off with a lot of chops to the chest, uh, receiving those, I should say, from Walter, as, of course, that's what he's, as the old school big guy type of wrestler that he is, that's what he's um, known to do uh, in the ring, so, yeah, I wouldn't necessarily say, I mean, hell, it already is on August, early September, a match of the year candidate, but at the same time, yeah, it probably is and probably will go down, unless we see something, you know, better, of course, by the end of the calendar year here come New Year's Eve, December the 31st, and then also talk about upcoming takeovers and pay-per-views. We do know for the main roster, of course, following SummerSlam weekend here, Extreme Rules will be September the 26th. WWE Crown Jewel over in Saudi Arabia for the blood money uh, will be uh, penciled in, rumored uh, October the 21st, which is a Thursday once again. Uh, we'll see what time that show starts, probably around noon or 1 p.m. Uh, around lunchtime there. And then um, come November, it'll be Survivor Series, and then December. Pay-per-view is going to be in Chicago, but we don't know the exact pay-per-view name at this point in time. But, um, yeah, that's that. So then the co-main event and main event of the evening with the two out of three falls and NXT championship matches being those in respective order. As mentioned, it was Adam Cole and Kyle O'Reilly, two out of three falls, one, two, three, traditional wrestling, street fight, and then a steel cage if it went that far. Cole mentioned uh, in promos leading up to TakeOver that he was going to beat them uh, two to zip, straight, clean, they won't have to go to a third fall for it to be inside of a steel cage. However, it did go to the third fall inside of that respective steel cage uh, as um, O'Reilly won the first fall, Cole won the second fall, so O'Reilly won for traditional wrestling, Cole won for a street fight, and then third for the steel cage, Kyle O'Reilly submitted made Adam Cole tap out which I was a little surprised about because normally you don't see Adam Cole tap out if he's losing he's taking the pin or he's being saved and he's ringside during the pin fall during the finish it, say if it's a triple threat fatal four or whatever the case may be uh, but the undisputed finale of course with uh, Bobby Fish since release from the company and then Roderick Strong, who replaced Bobby Fish when he was injured to make the Undisputed Era a four-man group instead of the three that they were when they initially debuted back in 2017. Also, SummerSlam weekend, NXT TakeOver Brooklyn 3. If I'm mistaken, let me know in the comments below. But uh, it was always Adam Cole as the leader. It was Red Dragon, Fish and O'Reilly as your tag team, and then Strong inserted once Bobby Fish got injured that following spring, April, March, April of 2018, uh, in between the times that I've seen NXT Live, two out of three times. I've seen them videos right here on the channel for all previous wrestling events I've attended as well, so be sure to go check those out, along with the most recent ones from the past month. But, um, yeah, with Fish no longer with the company since being released as mentioned Roderick Strong with this diamond mine shit whatever the hell they're going to do there um, doesn't seem to be working as of now but only time's going to tell um, like I said earlier seems to me Strong's going to be challenging Kushida 
uh, for the Cruiserweight Championship. I mean, if Cole's going to be leaving, uh, which I think he is, I don't think he's going to be on Raw or SmackDown. He's going to be all in with All Elite Wrestling, and he's going to be on Wednesday and Friday nights uh, with AEW. Uh, so Adam Cole very well here at some point in time in the near future very well could be returning from the dead, if you know what I mean. But, um, you know, where does that leave Kyle O'Reilly, especially with the win? I mean, maybe push him to um, the NXT championship pitcher with uh, the two other names I've already mentioned tonight, which I can't see him fitting there right now. I mean, it would have to be either the NXT North American championship, the Million Dollar Championship, or the Cruiserweight Championship, in no particular order by any means. Um, I mean, if I'm O'Reilly, especially with Fish released... And Strong doing his own thing, but I'm not even considering him because he wasn't even, you know, original member. Um, and then if Cole leaves, if I'm Kyle O'Reilly, I want out too. Um, and then, of course, they can all go to AEW and uh, just not reform the Undisputed Era, but, you know, Adam Cole would be by himself. Um, he'd have Red Dragon back together, of course. You know, they're like second third version of the club you know behind Balor and then Styles with the good brothers and then you got Adam Cole okay so um we'll see what happens but yeah this two out of three falls I thought match wise it was better than the NXT UK championship match with uh Walter and Draganov but but has their own opinion let me know in the comments below yours I think he wants more for listening but uh yeah Traditional wrestling, street fight, steel cage. Kyle Riley picked up the win and um, very well could have sent Adam Cole packing his bags out of the WWE if, of course, he does not re-sign with the company. Now, if he re-signs, um, I would like him to stay in NXT. I know that's not going to happen, though. At the same time, he'd be fine up on Raw or SmackDown. Um, you know... Yeah, at some point in time, he could, um, I don't know, don't want to necessarily say get lost in the shuffle by any means, but, you know, Adam Cole is Adam Cole. And that's the thing. If he leaves now, okay, he leaves. So what? People still know who the hell he is. He stays and leaves in a few years, people are still going to know who the hell he is, and he's probably going to be bigger and better at that point in time, too. Uh, so, regardless if he stays or leaves, he's keeping Adam Cole because he was Adam Cole before he came to WWE. It's going to be boom. It's going to be Adam Cole, baby. However many people are in the crowd. Every single show. And, you know, Adam Cole is going to be one of the top stars in pro wrestling. As he's been and still is. And will be moving forward into the future. So, um, yeah. I mean, we'll see what happens. But, as mentioned, I think he's gone. Um, he's going to be technically a free agent um after tonight uh so like i said if you know what i mean yeah we very well could see adam cole uh come back from the dead um as he's been a ghost you could say to aew um or all of his previous friends on being the elite since he left and joined the wwe and you know he yeah, here we are four years later, and he could be returning. So um, we'll, we'll see if his hand comes up out of the grave or not. But, um, yeah, two out of three falls. This is the co-main event of the evening for TakeOver 36. O'Reilly with the win over Adam Cole. And potentially for the final time in WWE NXT, along with WWE in general, Adam Cole, baby. But he goes to AEW. We're still going to be doing that. So we might as well say it one more time here tonight, and then we'll be saying it more down the line, regardless of where he's at, whether it be WWE with Raw, NXT, SmackDown, AEW on Dynamite, Rampage, pay-per-views in general. So say it with me. Adam Cole, baby. Main event of the evening was, in fact, the NXT Championship. It was Karrion Cross and Samoa Joe. Samoa Joe made Cross go night-night, and Joe 
since his return to the company. I mean, hell, what a four months it's been for Samoa Joe. Samoa Joe's now a three-time and the first ever three-time NXT champion. So Samoa Joe with the win, close out the show, holding the title high. As mentioned, short, sweet, two-and-a-half-hour takeover. Um, NXT this upcoming week, uh, they have the breakout tournament finals with Hayes and Jones, as mentioned earlier. Um, I'm thinking the winner is going to take on the NXT North American champion and Isaiah Swerve Scott. As they've already said, it's going to be for a championship. They just haven't said which one. But you look at all the other titles right now, um, minus the women's, of course, because Carmella Hayes or Odyssey Jones isn't going to be challenging Raquel Gonzalez. I mean, if Odyssey Jones wins it, I mean, okay, maybe Samoa Joe now for the NXT Championship. I mean, I wouldn't mind seeing that be no damn well Joe's can retain. Um, and then really it would, because Million Dollar Championship-wise, neither of those two, I don't think right now, fit that bill. I mean, if Carmelo Hayes wins, it's either the Cruiserweight or NXT North American Championship, but then if it's Odyssey Jones, it's either going to be if they want to put him up against Joe, the NXT Championship then at that point, or the NXT North American title as well. But, um, yeah, Cross's reign, uh, along with Walters and LA Knights, uh, have all come to an end as champions this evening. So a lot of title changes this weekend. Uh, at SummerSlam and TakeOver 36, respectively. Um, and now Cross, just as he's been up on Raw the past month or so, uh, beating and losing to both Jeff Hardy and Keith Lee. Um, he'll be done with NXT moving forward, and he'll be up on the main roster. Uh, and we'll see the deal with him, whether they're going to you know, have him be inconsistent as all hell as he currently is right now. And... Or are they just going to have him look like a monster and he's going to be unstoppable and then eventually with him on Raw and then, I mean, you think about it, you know, Reigns on SmackDown ain't losing anytime soon, especially um, regardless, I should say, especially with um, Brock Lesnar returning. Um, you know, as mentioned during SummerSlam, Reigns is going to beat him. He's just going to beat The Rock then once he returns as well. And Reigns is still going to be top dog come the springtime after WrestleMania 38 next April. Um, so that puts Cross on Raw and then, you know, a potential uh, candidate to defeat Bobby Lashley, potentially. So, um, good for Samoa Joe, though, as mentioned. I mean, wrestled for the first time in a year and a half um, and won the NXT Championship, as mentioned, for the third time. Uh, first ever to do that in NXT's rich history. Uh, so congratulations to him, uh, especially with, you know, him being up on the main roster. This thing, main roster, Raw and SmackDown, they don't care what the hell you did or have done in the past. Um, that's just WWE in general for you. Uh, they'll try to change you or make people forget that this happened or that happened or, you know, not book you right or whatever the case may be. We're still going to be bitching about it regardless, but... Um, you know, that, that's the thing with pro wrestling. At, at least we have something else to bitch about in this world with everything going on. But all jokes aside, um, yeah, Joe was, you know, on commentary for how long? And then just out of the blue after WrestleMania with all the uh, cuts that WWE has made the past year and a half as well, uh, especially the two or three rounds that they've already done this year, let alone... Um, Samoa Joe was a part of those, but then returned about two months later, four months ago now, back, um, or excuse me, it's, yeah, been a whirlwind of four months for him. Got fired in April, two months later, back in June, returned to NXT, and then, yeah, hey, I know 2 plus 2 is 4. Um, June to now, Samoa Joe is uh, NXT champion once more as he was provoked. Uh, and uh, was cleared, and now back in the ring, and he's the face, once again, of the yellow brand of the WWE, WWE NXT, and technically, I don't even know if you want to be calling it a third brand, or just the yellow brand, even though technically that's what it is, but a third brand to the WWE with Raw and SmackDown, as we all know that's what it is, or has become, but 
in WWE's eyes, it, it seems to me they still see NXT as developmental. And like I just said, they don't care what you've done in the past. They're going to do whatever the hell they want with you. You know, once you get up uh, to uh, Raw or SmackDown with the red and blue brand, if you will. But, you know, at the same time, it is what it is. You know, like I've always said, they're going to do what the hell they want because it's their company. They know we're going to sit here and um, continue to watch it one way or another, whether we like it or not. So, um, yeah, that's NXT TakeOver 36 as a whole plus some add-ins just like the three we had for SummerSlam to make the show go on and on and on. I know everybody's probably wishing I'd wrap this the hell up as well, but we're almost done, so stick around. As mentioned, uh, have an update on upcoming live streams as well. So, um, yeah, quick results. Long story short here, Rich Holland defeated Trey Baxter on the kickoff pre-show. The Million Dollar Championship kicked off the night as Cameron Grimes defeated L.A. Knight. We went to the moon, then we came back down to earth and saw Raquel Gonzalez defeat Dakota Kai, retain her NXT championship, women's championship, I should say, and then the NXT UK and NXT championships all received, they both received um, new title holders as well as Ilya Dragunov defeated Walter and Samoa Joe defeated Karrion Cross, along with Kyle O'Reilly defeating Adam Cole uh, in traditional wrestling, street fight, and inside of Steel Cage in their two out of three falls match here this evening. As mentioned, NXT Breakout Tournament Finals is Tuesday. It'll be Carmelo Hayes and Odyssey Jones, uh, in which the winner will receive a championship opportunity. I'm thinking that will be for the NXT North American Championship, just because cruiserweight-wise, it's Kushida and Roderick Strong right now. It looks like, as mentioned, though, with Hayes, if he wins, uh, it could be for either of those two titles. Uh, and then with Odyssey Jones, either the North American or NXT Championship up against Samoa Joe. Million Dollar Championship with Cameron Grimes now as your new champ. Um, look for Johnny Gargano, one half of Index with Dexter Loomis. Uh, as we'll have a wedding with Indy and Dexter on NXT uh, over the next month or so, I would think, unless they'd want to hold off and build it up even more. And then if they have another TV special of some sorts, I mean, really the next TV special they would have, I guess, for NXT, as they had last year, would, say, probably be Halloween Havoc. And then the New Year's shows that they ran this past year. Um, but for the most part, and yeah, it'll probably just be on a regular NXT TV, not a TV special, uh, pay-per-view worthy special, if you will. Um, but yeah, look for those two right now. I'm thinking to challenge Grimes, uh, especially with, uh, Candace pregnant. I mean, they're probably going to keep her on TV for a little while longer. Um, so you have Gargano, Candace, and then also uh, Dexter Loomis and Indy Hartwell. Indy could be an option for uh, Raquel Gonzalez, but it seems to me it'll be Kaylee Ray. Um, and then, I mean, you have Frankie Monet and a few other women in NXT right now, too. So, I mean, there's a few different routes they could take here, but um, just some quick thoughts following the show. Um, yeah, Gargano's not really going to have anything else to do once Dexter probably turns on him, maybe that turns into a number one contender for this title or one of the titles. Um, because, you know, once this whole Gargano Way stuff wraps up with Candace going to be pulled from TV, you would think at some point in time, like I said, they'll probably keep her on TV for a little while longer, but, you know, I would assume by the end of the year it'll be done and Dexter and Gargano are going to be in a feud, except maybe number one for a title. Maybe not, though. Maybe they form a tag team and uh, boost the tag team division there. Um, but, yeah, Grimes, Gargano, Grimes, Loomis. I mean, Grimes and, like I said, even maybe potentially the winner of the breakout tournament just for the hell of it if they, you know, want to go there. But 
whether it's Carmelo Hayes or Odyssey Jones, in which I saw Odyssey Jones dark match before a WWE TV last month. Be sure to go check out that video as well. Uh, hell, it could be Austin Theory, the man he wrestled that night, who's still a part of the way. Um, but those two don't really fit the bill, I don't think, right now for the million dollar title. Hell, there might be somebody that, even with DiBiase on Grimes' side now, um, he might turn on him. He might, you know, bring somebody else into NXT. He might debut somebody or have somebody return for all we know and well there's that story um we'll probably get rematches too for the hell of it you know moving forward uh but um long term wise just a few options for uh, a few of these current champions and then with with the nxt championship samoa joe i mean they've been teasing him and pete dunn for quite a while but pete dunn and rich holland seem to be a tag team right now i mean maybe rich holland is going to be a dark horse candidate for uh, any of these potentially uh, moving forward uh, but like I said Ridge and Pete it seems uh, you know they'll be taking on Champa and Thatcher at some point in time and then you still got to think about Champa he, he still wants Goldie back for God's sake so um, yeah Samoa Joe Pete Dunn teasing that since Joe returned uh, you know Joe Gargano Joe and Champa as well uh, but then like I said with Samoa Joe and LA Knight potentially uh, and then Samoa Joe and Walter would tear the house down um, there's a few different options here uh, and then real quick here with the main roster following SummerSlam as well um, the WWE Championship of course Bobby Lashley defeating Bill Oldberg Goldberg uh, at SummerSlam Lashley there's I have about four or five potential candidates for him as okay yeah they probably broke the hurt business up too soon he's held the title now for six months it's probably about time unless they're going to have him hold this championship title into the late stages of this year early next year maybe lose it if they build somebody up to him say next year at Wrestlemania um, one of those or both of the candidates for that potentially one being Keith Lee, the other would be Karrion Cross, um, but then the other three just because of outcomes from uh, Saturday with Drew McIntyre picking up the winner over Jinder Mahal, uh, and then both Sheamus and AJ Styles and Almos losing the United States and Raw Tag Team Championships respectively. You got to throw their hats uh, into the mix as well. Um, yeah, so Lashley, McIntyre, Drew should have beat him at Mania this past year. He didn't, and then he's just been floating around ever since, even with three matches and then the gender feud right now. But um, we'll see what happens there. But, yeah, Lashley, McIntyre, Lashley, Sheamus, Lashley, and AJ Styles uh, go back to uh, TNA there. And then Lashley, Keith Lee would be, if they're going to continue to build him up off of TV and then make people forget that um, you know he, he lost to Karrion Cross here uh, and beat him as well a few times uh, since he's been back uh, on on Raw uh, following his uh, hiatus from earlier this year until just last month as he also released a YouTube video on his channel um, saying of course uh, he was diagnosed uh, contracted COVID-19 uh, and then was also fighting for his life. So I'm uh, glad to hear, Keith Lee, uh, you're doing well. And um, hopefully, booking-wise, you'll at some point in time here moving forward be in a better spot than you are right now. But as I've said for numerous uh, superstars, wrestlers, whatever the hell you want to call them in the past, at least they're on TV. Whether they're winning or losing, at least they're in the fold, um, regardless of what's going on. In their personal life but you know when it rains it pours shit hits the fan you know totally understand in that regard and like i said ho ho hope you're doing well but uh yeah keith lee and karen cross would be the the two th if they'd build them up to the moon as cameron grimes would say and then you know they'd be two of the right now at least even with the wwe draft coming up in october for next april WrestleMania 38 in Dallas 
for Lashley to put over, those two would make the most sense, I think, right now. But who knows? Um, and that, and that, you know, in my opinion, makes it as if okay, they are going to do that. Say with Keith Lee, well, you would think he's going to win the Royal Rumble then at that point. Um, that would make the most sense booking wise. Give him a championship opportunity at Mania, and then he wins. Um, but honestly, hopefully they do, but do they honestly believe in him that much? The way it's looked, unfortunately, no, probably not, which I hate to say that, but, you know, truth truth, as Matt already says, it sucks, but yeah, it, it, like, he, he would be one to win the Royal Rumble if that's the route they'll take there. Um, I said over the weekend... You know, Riddle would be a good option to win the Rumble as well right now. But with the new RK Bro Raw Tag Team uh, champions, they'll split either by the end of the year or early next year. One's going to turn on the other, and then it'll be Orton and Riddle at WrestleMania. And then I said after that, Riddle, he'd be an option uh, to win Money in the Bank next summer as they announced this past weekend as well, will in fact be July the 4th weekend in Sin City, Las Vegas, Nevada. So, uh, yeah, WWE, along with just the whole entire wrestling world, dropping news like flies. But, yeah, that's the WWE pitcher right now, I think, uh, for Bobby Lashley's WWE Championship. We'll see who gets the challenge and potentially defeat the Almighty. United States Championship pitcher Damian Priest defeated Sheamus. Keith Lee could be in this pitcher as well, um, along with Ricochet. Potentially Miz and Morrison um, if one finally turns on the other. I mean, I've been calling for this for, geez, a year, year and a half, but um, we'll see if they keep them together as a tag team for a little while or if they do split them up here sometime soon. I would hope for the latter. Uh, and then, you know, okay, whoever comes out of that potential uh, option for the mid-card championship on whether it be Raw or SmackDown, like I said, especially with the draft coming up. I mean, yeah, we're going to see some shuffling around, but it's going to be the big question on, as New Day says, who? Who's going to go from Raw to SmackDown, SmackDown to Raw, NXT to either uh, maybe... Raw NXT, or Raw SmackDown, excuse me, back down to NXT like Finn Balor as of late, but Balor is back up now on the main roster on Friday Night SmackDown. We'll get to the Universal Championship picture here in a second. Uh, so, yeah, that's basically it for the U.S. I mean, on SmackDown for the Intercontinental, one, two options there as well. Speaking of Balor, Nakamura and Finn Balor, yes. Hell yes, give me that any day of the week. And then Nakamura and Kevin Owens as well. And I'll say the same thing to that. Yes, hell yes to that too. Give me that any day of the week too. So um, maybe even a triple threat between the three. Can't forget about uh, Cesaro, Sami Zayn. Uh, I get Apollo Crews just lost, so at some point in time you'd think he'd get a rematch. Um, Baron Corbin, no longer king, but been down on himself as late. He's lost everything. How long will it be until he gets back on his feet? We'll see. Um, you know, maybe he, because Nakamura was the one to take the crown from him, maybe Corbin, when he uh, does in fact, hopefully sometime soon, please do go donate to the Baron Corbin Fund as well. Uh, maybe he'll be the one to take the gold off of the new king in Shinsuke Nakamura. I doubt it, but you never know. Um, but yeah. U.S. and the IC, United States Intercontinental. It's Priest and Keith Lee, Priest and Ricochet, I think, and then Nakamura and Balor, Nakamura and Owens right now. But like I said, you can't forget about uh, even Elias, Jeff Hardy, maybe even Jinder Mahal following his loss to Drew McIntyre at SummerSlam here. Um, and then, like I said, Apollo Crews, Baron Corbin, Cesaro, and Sami Zayn uh, from SmackDown. But we'll have more, of course, insight on all of this I will, personally. Uh, well, we all will, basically. Um, following the draft. Um, so, the Raw tag and SmackDown tag, well, it's just the Usos and Street Profits on SmackDown. Um, and then, on Monday Night Raw, Miz and Morrison, like I said, if they keep them together, 
They split them up. Okay, good. They need to. Been dragging on. Um, not dragging on, but I just want them, want one or the other to turn on each other and then have themselves a, a little feud. Uh, whether, you know, be little for now or it turns into something and then, you know, they, they go their own separate ways or one becomes a champion or whatever the case may be. We'll see. But, you know, Miz and Morrison potentially, New Day, Viking Raiders, war, war, war for the war machine. And then even uh, Mustafa Ali and Mansoor. And then T-Bar and Mace, too, just for the hell of it on Raw. Sucks Dijak is still doing what he's doing. But like I said before, at least he's on TV. You know, and it seems to me they've been pushing them as a, not a, I don't even know what you want to call them, reliable tag team. They've picked up wins. They've also lost a few, but, um, you know, they could be options for the newly crowned Raw Tag Team Champions and RK-Bro as well. I don't know, though. Uh, and then on Raw and SmackDown for the Women's Championship titles, respectively, uh, Charlotte just defeated both Nikki A.S.H., almost the superhero, Nikki Cross, and Rhea Ripley at SummerSlam in that triple threat match they had for the Raw Women's Championship. So, got to throw both of the challengers that Charlotte had to challenge for one and then face in the same match as the other with both Nikki and Rhea as potential contenders for her new Raw Women's Championship. But then also Alexa Bliss, Shayna Baszler, and Asuka. Uh, Asuka really hasn't been seen as of late. Um, Alexa just defeated Eva Marie. Uh, Piper has sort of turned on Eva. Eva's probably going to turn on her at some point in time, too. So they'll have a little mini feud probably nobody's going to care about, unfortunately. Especially for Piper. It just feels so bad for her, too. But it is what it is. Uh, especially with the name change to Dewdrop of all names. Like, give me a break, WWE. Like, Jesus Christ. Vince, grow the hell up. I know you're as old as you are, but come on, man. Like, it's not 1950 anymore, and not necessarily what you've done to the wrestling world, even though you know what the hell you're doing because you've been doing it for so long, um, and you're not always to blame. There's a con man, not an AEW, but he goes by the first name Nick that he's been screwing some shit up, but, I mean... It's like some of this shit, booking wise. Like that's why I always say booking was ten times better. They don't have to worry about people not watching because the shit they'd be producing, putting out on TV for, you know, whether it be Raw, NXT, SmackDown, whatever, pay per views as well. Um, the stories would flow. Shit would make sense. I get not everything makes sense, but still, when it's bad and you don't see it and it's right in front of you, like come on. Like, I don't know. I've been over this ten times before. I don't want to go down that route tonight. Um, but SmackDown Women's Championship then, it was Bianca Belair and Sasha Banks at SummerSlam. However, they announced Sasha was un unable to compete. So, out came Carmella, which people weren't happy about because we've seen that how many damn times before. No offense to either. But um, Becky Lynch then returned. The man came around and returned to SummerSlam. And, of course, she attacked Carmella uh, and then defeated Bianca Belair like that in a split second. And, of course, fans weren't happy about that either. But, hey, it is what it is. Looks like she's going to be a heel moving forward. And um, SmackDown's going to need that in the uh, women's division, especially with Bailey's injury. Um, about a month or so ago now, whatever month, right before the fans returned, if I'm not mistaken. Um... And, you know, we'll see what's up with Sasha. But, uh, like I said, Saturday night, okay, Bianca lost her title. She's going to want it back. Sasha was unable to compete, or the hell that's supposed to mean. She's going to want a title opportunity when she returns. And then Carmella's going to say she got screwed. So, you know, there's three for Becky Lynch right there. But Tony Storm's a dark horse, I think. You know, they had her uh, come up from NXT, debut on SmackDown. She's wrestled once, maybe twice. I think just once, and it was one time that um, I saw her uh, videos right here on the channel as well. So, yeah, we'll see what happens there. Uh, and then the uh, Universal Championship with, keep in mind, 
for the WWE Championship and the Universal Championship, Big E is still Mr. Money in the Bank. He's gotten back the briefcase from Baron Corbin, uh, but he can cash in anytime, anywhere. I hope to God it's going to be on Lashley on Raw, um, if they're going to put the whole entire New Day on Raw come the draft or not. I don't know. We'll see. But um, if Big E catches it on Reigns from now until April, he's going to lose. If he catches in after WrestleMania, he'll probably win. Maybe even at WrestleMania of all times. Um, give him, of course, his WrestleMania moment then at that point. But, um, you know, yeah, Big E can uh, cash in on Lashley whenever the hell he wants to, for all I care. But if he does it to Reigns from now until Mania, he's not going to win the title. Uh, but just keep Big E in mind as Mr. Money in the Bank. As mentioned, he can cash in anytime, anywhere because he won the Money in the Bank ladder match this year. Uh, but for Roman Reigns' Universal Championship, after defeating, of course, John Cena at SummerSlam, uh, keep in mind Finn Balor, and then also uh, the Seth Rollins Edge match, in which Edge was victorious in, defeating Mr. Nickname, as I would call him, Seth Frickin' Rollins, as Edge burned it down against Rollins, Tyler Black at SummerSlam in Vegas just last night. So, both of them, and then the returning Beast Incarnate and Brock Lesnar. As right now, it's going to be Reigns and Lesnar, and then there's going to be a, a middle match. There's going to be a middleman for getting Reigns over the hump into the new year before, well, not even into the new year because it's going to depend on when The Rock returns, whether it's going to be Survivor Series or Royal Rumble or who knows where or when. Um, so, yeah. Whoever it's going to be, they're still going to lose and then Reigns is going to uh, would have defeated okay, from now everybody's beaten the past already as Universal Champion. He's been champion now for one full calendar year or will be this time next week but you get my point. But from now until next WrestleMania, he would have defeated John Cena, which he just did. He's going to beat Brock Lesnar and he's going to beat The Rock. Roman Reigns, this Roman Reigns at least, is the best Roman Reigns we've ever seen and the best Roman Reigns we're ever going to get. So enjoy it while it lasts. Roman Reigns is the top dog of this generation. He is the Hulk Hogan, Stone Cold, Rock, and Cena wrapped up into one and that's what the current WWE Universal Champion is as he is the big dog tribal chief who sits at the head of the table who we should all acknowledge he showed up and won once again this weekend he wrecked John Cena and he left before of course Brock Lesnar came out but um yeah, Reigns is still going to be champion, whether you like it or not, from now until at least next spring, and then we'll go from there. But that's, from my point of view at least, my opinion, uh, of course what happened at TakeOver 36 here, and then also uh, to sum up the WWE as a whole with, you know, potential... Uh, Stories, potential feuds moving forward. Um, as mentioned, SummerSlam weekend was, in my opinion, one of the best in uh, quite some time. So, yes, thank you for tuning in and listening to this uh, NXT TakeOver recap with some thoughts and opinions on uh, other pro wrestling news information. Uh, of course, wish it would have been during the live stream this evening uh, for WWE. NXT TakeOver 36, but as mentioned, due to technical difficulties, uh, was unable to continue that and uh, decided, as I've done in the past, as mentioned, sit down and record this after the fact and upload it then to the YouTube channel here afterwards. So hopefully you enjoyed. Did hit the thumbs up button. Be sure to like, follow, and subscribe on social media. Links in the description below. And oh, by the way, before I forget, uh, the next upcoming live stream will kick off the 2021 college football season 
as we'll see the blue and white Penn State Nittany Lions travel to Madison, Wisconsin and take on the Wisconsin Badgers from Camp Randall Stadium. That'll be Saturday, September the 4th. The next night, AEW All Out. Live watch along or action streams live right here on YouTube of both of those events. Followed by the NFL kickoff the following Thursday, September the 9th, 2021, with the defending Super Bowl 55 champion Tampa Bay Buccaneers hosting the Dallas Cowboys before we get into a full week two then of the college football season and then week one of the NFL. As week zero is this upcoming weekend already for college football and then of course we can all count from zero to the end of the season with the college football playoff, the NFL playoffs, and the college football playoff national championship and Super Bowl 56 which will be in L.A. this year, in which WrestleMania 37, this past April, was supposed to be out in L.A. in Inglewood at the new SoFi Stadium. But, of course, WrestleMania 36 last year was a two-night event in Tampa with no fans because of COVID. 37, two nights once again this year in Tampa Ram James Stadium, where Super Bowl was two months prior. We'll head to Dallas for WrestleMania 38 next April. And then Mania 39 will be in Southern California. But, um, yeah, wrap this up here once more. Thank you for tuning in and listening. Wished, as mentioned, would have been actually live. An actual face-to-face live watch along or action stream of me watching TakeOver. But here we are once more. So, yeah. Be sure to like, follow, and subscribe. Links in the description below. Hope to see everybody for WWE Extreme Rules as well next month, September the 26th, uh, as that'll be the next upcoming WWE main roster pay-per-view. We'll see what happens with TakeOvers moving forward as well with NXT. Um, We'll catch a few Raws and SmackDowns potentially uh, during the college football and NFL football season as well but uh, the next upcoming live watch along your action streams live right here on the channel will be Saturday and Sunday Labor Day weekend September the 4th and 5th for college football Penn State Wisconsin and AEW All Out in which as we started the show with CM Punk returning on Friday night during AEW Rampage that Sunday night September the 5th CM Punk will have his first pro wrestling match in seven and a half years versus Darby Allen as 20 minutes into the promo on Friday night during Rampage Punk called out Darby as him and Sting were high in the rafters Punk, Darby along with uh, Kenny Omega and Christian Cage with Hangman uh, on leave right now Um, he'll be back though folks don't worry and he'll end up defeating Omega to become AEW World Heavyweight Champion at some point in time. Probably at full gear now. Uh, but, um, yeah, hope to see everybody uh, for all the matches uh, on all the wrestling shows, regardless of when they are. Uh, live right here on YouTube for live watch-along reactions. And once more, hope to see everybody. Penn State, Wisconsin, as Culture Bowl will kick off then along with AEW All Out the next night all live right here on youtube for live watch long reactions and uh that does it for myself your host encyclopedia sports cool hand luke 96 once more thank you for tuning in and listening be sure to like follow and subscribe on social media links in the description below